Hey friends, it's Lori. Before today's show starts rolling, I want to make sure you know about our most popular ebook at theproducemoms.com, Science Fair and STEM Projects. This free ebook offers 15 science fair and STEM projects using fruits and vegetables. It's perfect for students, educators, and parents alike. We provide the supply list and step-by-step instructions for each project from start to finish. Of course, it's up to you and the students to find the conclusion. The Pro Produce Mom's Science Fair and STEM Projects ebook has been recognized by the National Science Teachers Association, and it is available to our podcast fans as a free download. Visit theproducemoms.com slash science to claim your copy today. Welcome to the Produce Moms podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of the Produce Moms podcast. We have a really important and special guest today, uh, Kirsten Signs Toby. She is the co founder and chief impact officer of Revolution Foods. Revolution Foods, you guys, this is a this is a company and an organization that is really focused on getting better food in schools all throughout America, uh, working under the tagline and purpose of building lifelong healthy eaters with kid-inspired, chef-crafted food. So without further ado, w- warm welcome today and a big amount of gratitude to Kirsten for being part of today's podcast. Kirsten, thanks for being here. Delighted to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's, uh, let's just go ahead and start at the beginning. I mean, how for our listeners that are here today, uh, you know, what is Revolution Foods and, uh, you know, what inspired you to start this? Yeah, well, uh, so Revolution Foods is uh, a company that I co-founded now um, going on 13 years ago. Well, we're just starting our 13th school year. Um, and we are focused on um, really kind of citywide and communitywide wellness. Um, And we are focused on that through sourcing, designing, and producing um, now over 3 million healthy, fresh uh, meals per week to schools and community programs across um, across 16 states, 30 major metro areas. Um, And, you know, we, we got into this because we were very focused on, you know, looking at the impact that what kids eat have on how they do in school and how they're set up for success. And um, particularly, you know, we've always been focused on communities and schools and students who have less access traditionally. So low income students, um, underserved communities. And uh, so we've made sure that our um, that our meals are both, you know, healthy, fresh, nutritious and, you know, delivered every day, but also that they're fully reimbursable through the federal um, meal subsidy programs that are offered through the USDA. Oh, fantastic. So, wow, uh, Kirsten, that's got to make you feel good. 13 years later, you're reflecting on your passion, your hard work and 3 million meals a week. That's that's significant. And uh, I'm sure expansion efforts are a big part of your vision moving forward. And gosh, I'm I'm really inspired by this these statistics you just shared and uh, the great work that you guys are doing. That's uh, that's just got to feel really good as the founder of this. Um, you know, we do a lot of work with schools um, and school food service at the Produce Moms, and I I love what you said about um, you know making sure that children who don't necessarily have access outside of schools we're kind of part of that uh, that demographic that you really targeted with this effort um, tell us a little bit more about your experiences with fresh food access in American schools and maybe specifically um, you know the the lower income demographics sure so um, so if, if folks who are listening aren't familiar with the national school lunch program the this is a federal program that's been in place for um, well basically since after World War II when the when this federal subsidy program was created initially to um, 
to make sure that it, it was it was created in the wake of World War II because the military was saying they had so many um, you know young folks who came into the military and were not fit enough to fight, meaning that they were undernourished. And so the government, you know, USDA and Department of Education took it upon themselves to create this very bipartisan um, supported program that provides funding for schools to provide meals to um, to low income kids and students. And, um, you know, fast forward to today, you have you have actually some of the same kind of, you know, positions and ranks of military leaders now saying that they have um, folks coming into the military that are too fat to fight and that are, you know, an undernourished in a very different way. Um, right. And so, you know, we've been very focused on making sure that kids who rely on those, um, those federally subsidized meals can mm -hmm. make sure that they have um, that the meals that they're being served at school are helping them to accomplish their their goals in terms of health and nutrition and wellness and um, and you know success in in life and in school, um, but also that they're you know that the meals really respect who they are and and where they come from. So a lot of our um, a lot of our focus in the last um, you know decade of of building the company has been on building the supply chain that goes into these meals, but then also really establishing a very unique approach to how we design our food. Um, so that means we have a team of chefs who work hand in hand with our dietitians and nutritionists to, um, to design food that, you know, like you said earlier, we, we call it kid inspired and chef crafted. So it's, you know, inspired by what kids like the communities and regions that, that our, you know, kids and families are coming from. So we do regional food development and regional sourcing in um, in order to make sure that the food that we're serving in a place like Louisiana is culturally appropriate for kids in Louisiana and the food that we're serving to kids in San Francisco is, you know, is based on the, the food cultures that kids come from. Um, and, you know, we, we know that one size doesn't necessarily fit all. Um, so, you know, we, we really kind of engage in the, in the regional culinary cultures of the areas that we work in. Um, but then we also are very focused on the quality of the ingredients coming into the supply chain. So we've created, you know, we've really built the first and um, the first and I think only clean, like truly clean label supply chain that's, you know, through and through. We have a very detailed process of vetting any ingredient or raw material that comes into our program before it gets into our chef's hands to, to design into meals. Um, to make sure that the food that we're putting in front of kids every day is is of the highest quality and you know truly respects them both culturally and um, you know healthfully and nutritiously and and is you know affordable in the sense that kids who qualify can actually get our meals for free. Yeah, that's that's great. You know, I I love everything you just explained there. I really love that you guys are operating with the understanding that food is culture and how you know that how food is such a part of you know everyone's culture it's how we celebrate life it's how we celebrate the demographics that we live in family traditions and i love that that um principle is just carried forward in revolution foods and i you know i didn't know that about your um about your organization i feel like i've followed you pretty closely and i really did not have an understanding of that and it uh, warms my heart to hear that you guys are prioritizing that in the work that you do so um Kirsten, can you explain just a little bit about the products that you offer to schools? Um, like, how does your relationship with schools work? Yeah, it's a great question. So we um, we offer uh, basically any meals that can be offered at schools. We offer them. So breakfast, lunch, after school snacks, and after school suppers. Um, and we offer them for preschools all the way through twelfth grade. And we're actually, you know, looking at developing foods for folks not just in the, the K through 12 education system, um, but in in the you know main part of where we're focused, um, you know, breakfast is an interesting program because, you know, many schools have not traditionally served breakfast because it's administratively difficult, hard to get kids to show up early for school. Um, so we've worked with we work very closely with schools and administrators to actually implement breakfast programs, which are much harder to implement than like a lunch program because every school has a as a lunch break and a, and a mechanism for serving lunch to kids. Um, but many schools don't have a way to serve breakfast um, to kids. So a lot of our effort and a lot of our recent growth has actually been in schools bringing breakfast programs in, either breakfast in the classroom or what are, what are called breakfast after the bell where breakfast are distributed during a, a morning break time so that it's not you know required for kids to come early to school to go to the cafeteria and get their breakfast. 
Right. So do you guys work in partnership and unison with the existing food service operation? Do you, are you a resource for schools that don't have, you know, cafeteria facilities? Are you, are you full service? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If we, elaborate on that if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, we can work in a lot of different ways with schools, um, everything ranging from, um, you know, primarily we partner with food service directors. So, you know, most large, most school districts or, you know, schools have um, have somebody who's responsible for uh, for the food program. Um, they're usually called the food service director. And, you know, as a food service director, your job is to bring in, you know, food and, and manage the budget. And so we partner with um, with food service directors to make sure that the programs and products that we offer meet their needs. And so that can mean anything from like in San Francisco where we are, you know, really the, the, the one main vendor that they work with. So, you know, our meals are, our, our meals are going into all the elementary schools, all the middle schools, and they're also offered as an option for the high school students. Um, as well as the food service director and, and food service team offers some kind of on-site cooking. We also work with schools um, who are, you know, who have no kitchen facilities whatsoever. And so they're, you know, we, we see this a lot in, um, in Southern California and in charter schools where you literally have kids, that, there's not even a cafeteria and you have kids like eating in a multi-purpose room or, you know, there's a table set up in the hallway. Um, so we have kind of what we call unitized individual meals that we can bring into schools like that where, um, you know, there's no kitchen infrastructure and no, no real ability to kind of handle open food. Um, and then we also do, we also offer what we call our family style program, which is, you know, more of a traditional kind of cafeteria line where we bring the food in in bulk and the school might have servers on site who, you know, scoop the food out onto plates for the kids. Um, so we, and then, and then we can work with all different levels of schools. So like I said, from preschools where there are, you know, where there are even different requirements for what, uh, for how the food needs to be served all the way through elementary and middle and, and high schools. You know, we can, we work with a lot of different kinds of schools and cafeterias and facilities. Um, but primarily it's, you know, the school leadership and the food service director who are our, um, you know, real key partners. And, and, you know, we find that, whether it's a principal or a superintendent or, or a food service director, um, we are seeing more and more of people in those leadership positions who are really looking for, you know, improving the quality of what they're offering to kids. Um, and, they, and they're seeing the connection between what foods are offered to kids and how the kids are doing in school. And um, so, you know, we've seen many of those leaders really starting to look for, um, look for a partner that, you know, like us that can provide a, um, everything from a turnkey solution to just, you know, whatever products they want to bring in from our, um, from our platform in addition to what they're doing themselves. So we have, you know, essentially a very flexible offering. Yeah, it sounds like it. It's really impressive. I, I guess I didn't realize, um, you know, the breadth of what you all had to offer. It is, uh, you, you do have something for everyone and it's, it's great to hear, learn also, uh, and just to kind of reemphasize something you stated previously in our conversation is that your products are reimbursable, um, is that by the, from the school lunch program, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so everything we make is, um, is reimbursable through either the national school lunch program, the school breakfast program, or the, um, the program that oversees after school meals, which is called the child and adult care food program. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. So, uh, how many schools do you guys currently serve? I mean, I know you said 3 million meals per week, 16 states. You mentioned some really impressive school districts, you know, taking care of, a district as large as, you know, the San Francisco school schools. I mean, that's huge. Uh, how many, do you know how many schools you guys are currently serving or how many school districts? So we are, you know, we're, we're delivering meals to, um, to close to 3000 individual school sites, school and community sites. So that might be a school that might be a after school program or a preschool, um, or a YMCA or a boys and girls club, but it's about yeah, three, 3000 points of delivery. Wow. So you're the logistics end of your business has to be the distribution. <laughs> and that might be, uh, that might be hard, the hardest part then, huh? Well, it certainly required a lot of, um, a lot of hard work and innovation to, to, you know, create this distribution network, um, and the supply chain and the, you know, the, build the team to, um, to do it all. It's been, um, 
yeah, I think, you know, that's one of the areas that we have really innovated, I think, is in fresh food production and delivery and, and maintaining quality through that whole chain. Yeah. And being able to do it, you know, in so many different formats and styles and, uh, you know, with, with the fresh, clean ingredients, like you were saying, I mean, this is, it's, uh, gosh, everything you're saying is just another win, you know, like it's a, it's a win, <laughs> win all around. It's a, it's a very, this is a very positive organization. You guys are doing really important work. Um, I know it's, I know you know that you're working with the passion as the co-founder here and chief impact officer at that, but man, uh, it's gotta, it's gotta feel good when you lay your, your head on your pillow at night because you're doing some really important work here. Kirsten, thank you for all that you do. Um, so as, as you look at your current scope as well as, I mean, obviously I'm sure you have, uh, you know, lofty growth goals as the co-founder and the entrepreneurial spirit here. Um, is your service accessible to all demographics of schools, urban, rural, large, small, you mentioned you're already in a lot of charter schools. Um, you know, what, how are, what are your, what's your growth look like and, sounds like you can go pretty much everywhere. Um, but tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, we really can go, um, you know, pretty much everywhere that's within a delivery reach of our culinary centers. So we want to make sure, you know, when we are producing food out of our, out of our culinary centers, we're, um, you know, taking it as far as it will go and maintaining quality. So, um, so that allows us to reach, you know, fairly, a fairly broad radius. Um, mm -hmm. But so that's where, you know, the, where the 16 states that we currently serve come from. Um, but we're actually and, you know, we, we I would say we mostly focus on a more urban areas. But, you know, we certainly serve, um, you know, schools that are that are surrounding urban areas also, not just not just suburban, but, you know, some of the more rural communities that are that are close enough to the urban areas where we produce the food. Um, we definitely can serve both large and small schools. Um, you know, there's, there becomes a limit of the, you know, if there's, if a school is so small that, you know, if it doesn't um, make sense, you know, for sort of economically for us to bring the food there, if there's not a high enough, you know, level of participation amongst those kids. Um, but we're also working on um, actually, you know, building our, some of our products, some of our most popular products um, into food that are into products that can be kind of packaged and sold through, distributors so that we can get out to some of the more hard to access areas um, like, you know, rural areas and, you know, states outside of the 16 states that we currently yeah, serve. Out, grow outside of that current corridor. That's, yeah, that's great. It's amazing. Uh, and really exciting. Can't wait to keep an eye on the growth that I'm, I'm confident that you all will continue to have. Um, so let's talk a little bit about fresh produce with Revolution Foods. I mean, what is what would you say the role is of fresh fruits and vegetables with your with your products and do all your meals contain produce? Um, you, pretty much all of our meals contain produce. Our breakfasts always come with uh, fresh fruit. Lunches always come with fresh fruit and vegetables. Um, and our after school meals are served with fruit and vegetables as well. So we are and, and we're incredibly focused on making sure that you know even though the um, the USDA guidelines, you know, allows you to substitute things like, you know, juice for fruit and call it the same thing. We are, um, we have very strict guidelines around, you know, we want to make sure that kids are always having access to, to whole fresh fruit because that is, you know, incredibly, um, you know, much more nutritious than, um, than things like processed fruit or canned fruit or juices. So um, we are, uh, we, we do have a lot of a lot of fresh produce going out, you know, every single day and, um, and being consumed both fruit and vegetables. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's great to hear. And I'm not that surprised, you know, perusing your website, uh, you guys got to check it out. Revolutionfoods.com. Uh, I mean, these, these, this imagery of your menu items and your product offerings, I mean, it's, it uh, doesn't look like the school meals that, uh, you know, I remember from my childhood. And unfortunately, nor does it look like a lot of the school meals I encounter with our with our current ongoing work um, as we as we get involved with, you know, school food service initiatives throughout the U.S. So, um, you know, Kirsten, do you have a what's your favorite what's your favorite menu item? I mean, I, I'm looking at this thinking, how do I order off of it? It all looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. We um, 
I was saying we do a lot of sort of regional and culturally relevant um, food development and culinary development for our for the communities that we serve. And we also serve all of our school meals here in our office for lunch every day. Um, so I was I, one of my favorites, which I just ate for lunch today because it was in our um, in our office kitchen are, are these new pupusas that we have developed, um, particularly for some of the there's a very large Central American population in the D.C. area um, who, you know, the kids were demanding pupusas. And so we said, well, let's get out there and, and source a clean label, um, you know, clean label corn base and beans and cheese. And, and we have these delicious, delicious pupusas that are, you know, both nutritionally balanced, but also, you know, taste like what you would get in a, you know, traditional pupus pupuseria in, um, in the D.C. area. So that's one of my favorites. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, I love that. I love that your staff is eating your food too. That's really important when, you know, I mean, uh, just to see that active participation on your end, uh, makes, it makes sure that it, it, that ensures that your food not only is bringing forward culture, but it's bringing forward love. You know, there's, you guys are all active believers and participants in what you're doing. And that's so important, you guys. So I love that. Um, so obviously, I mean, I view you, Kirsten, as a as a social entrepreneur, just like all the folks we interview here and feature on the Produce Moms podcast, you know, an, an individual who's truly doing work that matters the most. What would you say, um, you know, to our listeners, what's one of the top lessons this journey of Revolution Foods? Um, you know, what, what's one of the top lessons that that you've learned? Well, you know, I think one thing that any entrepreneur needs to remember, and it's really hard when you're, especially in the early years when you're first starting, is that you need to treat it as a, a marathon and not a sprint. Um, you know, we've been doing this now for over 12 years. And, um, you know, I think we are, we've been working incredibly hard every day. But, I, you know, as, as time has gone on, we have really started to recognize that, you know, you need to kind of take care of yourself along the way and, and make sure that you're not getting too burnt out by just the sheer volume of, of work because there's always a mountain of, uh, there's always a mountain ahead of you, you know, no matter how, how much success you have, there's always more, uh, more to do. So I think kind of keeping that perspective is, um, is really important. That's awesome. Thank you. Good reminder for me and, you know, anyone out there who's <laughs> grinding in that entrepreneur life. So thank you. Uh, very wise words there, you guys. Um, Kirsten, where can our listeners go to learn more about Revolution Foods, this amazing work you guys are doing? Uh, how can people uh, share our passion for your cause and, and support what you're doing, too? Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, check out our website, uh, www.revolutionfoods.com. And we also have a pretty active Twitter and Facebook presence. So and both of those are Revolution Foods. Um, so but all of those are, are places where you can engage and, you know, ask us questions and, and learn more. Great. Thank you. And, and for any parents that are listening and once you see these items is the, is the best thing that they could do, just make the, make the request directly with the school food service team at their son or daughter's school. Hey, check out revolution foods. These menu items look amazing. That's the kind of stuff I want my kids having at school. Yes, exactly. They should go to their food service director um, and or, you know, principal, depending on kind of who's making the decisions in their school. Yeah. Okay. So school food service director or the principal. Thank you. All right. Well, you know, uh, Kirsten, we're, we're coming close to the end of our time here. Uh, our guests always have the last word, but before I throw the mic to you, I, I just want to emphasize one more time, you know, my gratitude for what you're doing. Uh, I really believe in and the platform of Revolution Foods and the purpose, the fact that you guys are bringing delicious, culturally inspired dishes to school cafeterias, uh, really all, all across the United States in this, in this emerging corridor that you guys have. I'm, I'm really excited for you. The, the impact, too, of your, of your work and your dedication to this cause, three million meals per week of fresh, healthy, clean ingredient foods, very nutrient dense, full of fruits and vegetables. Uh, you know, Kirsten, you and your team at Revolution Foods, thank you for everything that you're doing. Thanks for being part of today's show. And, you know, please go ahead and sign off, have the last word today. And uh, I just can't thank you enough for what you do and for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me and um, it was great to, great to speak with you. And I hope if anyone wants to learn more about what we're doing, they'll, they'll, they'll check us out on social media and, uh, and on our website. 
Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to Lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a Produce Mom in you because there's a Produce Mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.